everyone. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series. I have a great show today. I've been waiting for this show for a number of weeks. I am so excited to have Mr. Lewis Bell on the show. You know, at Dotcom Magazine, we love bringing the leaders in their field on the show, as everybody knows. And one thing we love at Dotcom Magazine, as everyone knows that watches the show, is speed. I mean, we love fast things. We love fast motorcycles, fast cars, fast jets. And of course, what we've got today is a very fascinating interview with Mr. Lewis Bell, who's the founder and CEO of, get this name, Speedbird Jets. And he's a remarkable founder, a remarkable leader and CEO. He's in the jet charter business, and he specializes in citation tens. We're going to get into it all. But he has this thing that he talks about, which is this 1% advantage. We're going to get into that as well. But Lewis, before we get started with all the questions, welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Thanks, Andy. I'm so glad to be here. It's a, it's a real honor to be here today. It really is. It's great to have you, Lewis. I mean, here we go. Let's pull the lens back before we get all the questions answered about charter services and the Citation 10 and the speed and, of course, this unbelievable experience that you provide your clients is remarkable. Let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet and tell us about Speedbird Jets. Okay. Well, let's go up to 470. That's where the, uh, that's where the Citation 10 flies. We typically fly between 45 and 47,000 feet, which is a couple of miles higher than airliners. So Speedbird Jets is a FA certified aircraft management and charter company. Um, we are a specialist company. We specialize in operating an airplane called the Citation 10, or some people know it as the Citation X. And it is one of the fastest jets in the world. And really, the, when you talk about private charters, people think about the luxury and all the, the, you know, all the accoutrements that go along with that. But really, this is a very powerful business tool. 85% of Fortune 500 companies, corporations use private aviation. And the real value to it, the principal value is speed. So, you know, there's a time savings and avoiding um, larger airports. There's time savings and not going through TSA and check-in lines. There's time savings um, that's always that comes from going driving straight to the airplane but we take it to the next level or the Citation 10 takes it to the next level. This airplane was designed by Cessna to be the fastest airplane in the world and to be able to go from New York to LA in four hours. And if you think about that, you can leave LA, go to New York, have a meeting and be home for dinner back in Los Angeles. It's, it's, a, it's a remarkable airplane. It's a niche airplane. It's not the largest private jet in the world. Um, but it's the Lamborghini or Ferrari of private jets, and people love this airplane. Um, it has a unique distinction of being operated by NetJets at one time, which is probably are the industry's largest company, along with a, a lot of others. And is a lot of NASCAR people have, have owned the airplane, so it's a great airplane. And um, what we noticed at Speedbird Jets when I was putting this company together is we noticed that, and, and we're based in Southern California, we noticed there were a lot of big irons, what we call in the industry, Gulf Streams, which, you know, it's kind of synonymous now with private aviation, the Gulf Stream G4, or G5, you hear it in songs, you see it at the airplanes and movies, you know, it's like Learjet was back in the 60s and 70s. So now it's Gulf Stream. Well, we looked at the market and we noticed in LA alone, there were probably two dozen Gulf Streams available for charter, same in New York, same in South Florida. And those are big, big aviation markets. But we noticed there weren't a lot of Citation 10s that were available for charter. Lots of private owners had them. Fractional folk were using them. Not a lot for charter. So we, when we were putting together, putting Speedbird jets together, we actually um, saw an opportunity. We saw an opening. And so we actually built this company around the Citation 10, hence the name Speedbird Jets. Lewis, I love it so much. You found this open corridor with the Citation 10. And of course, you hang your hat on the speed. And of course, there, 
they're 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 luxurious as well. But we're, it, we we want to talk about the speed because what you said makes all the sense in the world. Someone from L.A. goes to New York four hours. They have a meeting. They can come back, be home for dinner. It's so remarkable. What types of clientele reach out to you at Speedbird Jets, and and where are they going? Where where are the 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 cities that people are going to the most right now using your service? Well, you know, we fly everyone from small business owners, entrepreneurs, C-suite executives, entertainers. Um, and our most common routes are coast to coast, those coast to coast routes, LA to New York, Seattle to New York, uh, LA to Florida, Florida to LA. So those coast to coast routes where people can, where the, where the airplane can really demonstrate it, it, its um, its capacity. Now, we again, we're really we're a specialist company. When I put this together, again, we were we wanted to be very surgical in our approach to the market. There are a lot of big guys out there. We're coming into the market. We're coming in a little stealth, a little guerrilla marketing, and we're constantly looking for where for areas where we felt we could do better. So our actual customers are charter brokers and other charter operators. Unlike uh, today when you buy an airline ticket, when you can simply go online to an internet exchange, most charter flights are still arranged by charter brokers. And I'd say about 60%. So we focus on those charter brokers. We really don't, um, we'll, we gladly fly anybody who calls us up, but we really focus on those charter professionals who know the industry, they know our capacity, and most importantly, they trust us with their clients. It's so powerful. And for the entrepreneurs watching the show, rewind what Lewis just said. I mean, he really gave you a, a mini USC or Harvard or UCLA, you know, business school sort of explanation about business right there. He found the open corridor. He's a specialist. His company really specializes in this one area. He's not a generalist and specialists typically win and generalists typically lose. Now, Lewis, you have this one thing I called it was, I called it earlier, the 1% advantage. You call it the 1% difference. Let's talk about that. What does that mean to you and your customers when you give them this 1% difference? So the service in itself, it's a very high end service. The expectation is in the 99th percentile. So, you know, the analogy is if you go to a Hilton property or a Marriott property versus a travel lodge or something, there's a certain expectation. You expect certain things from a Hilton. Now, if you transition and you're going to Ritz Carlton or St. Regis or Four Seasons, the expectation is even higher. The expectation is the chocolate on the pillow. So as a, a private jet or private transportation provider, the, it's the, the expected norm is that it's going to be a phenomenal experience. And Speedbird Jets, along with most of our competitors, we do offer phenomenal experience. So how do you break out? We break out, that 1% difference really is still that personal interaction. You know, there are a lot of online um, platforms now. There's a lot of efficiencies built into um, on, you know, online pro, uh, platforms. But we believe that that personal interaction, whether it's interacting with that charter broker, interacting with the client, interacting with um, our managed aircraft owners to truly know what they want, they, so they don't have to ask, to anticipate what their needs are. What is their profile? That's the 1% difference. And, we, and once we figure that out, we can't sit back and rest on our laurels. We have to continually push that envelope for that 1% difference. You know, a lot of people now um, fly with their pets, for example. And that's one of the great things about flying privately is, is you know, the pet is, is a part of the family. Um, hey, if you're flying with your, you know, your four-legged family member, do we have water bowls on the airplane or pee pads or things of that nature? Just anticipating what that need is. I, that's the 1% difference. Yeah, I love it. You think of everything. And of course, you mentioned that you work with these brokers and they have a lot of great clients, a great, great following, many of them throughout the country. How do they interact with you? How do they interact with Speedbird? Is it, is it done online? Is it done with a phone call? How do they connect their clients 
to the Speedbird sort of program and experience? Yeah, it's a really great question. This, I, I call this industry a multi-billion dollar mom and pop industry. It really is. It's so symbiotic. So we actually connect, the connections are typically online or telephone, but I think the FAA says there are oh, about 3,000 charter brokers, uh, which is kind of interesting because charter brokers are one of the few transportation entities that the FAA or the DOT or some other federal agency doesn't regulate. But of the 3,000, there are probably a couple of hundred that, are co- that really stand out. And we have personal relationships with those top tier brokers. They know us, we know them, and there's a trust. You know, they know that although the path, it's, they're our client, not the person in the airplane, that's the passenger. The broker is our client. So the networking comes on, on a daily basis from our, our operation staff, speaking with these folks, you know, these, and some of these people, this is a lifestyle business. It's a 24 seven transportation business. So you get to know the people on the other end of the phone or the other end of the computer monitor. You get to know them pretty well, pretty quickly, because you'll be talking to them at four o'clock in the morning while someone is, you know, trying it's four o'clock in the morning on the West coast. It's seven o'clock on the East coast. So someone's making breakfast and the other person is, you know, coming out of a, a, a sleep. So you get to know, we, we get to know each other pretty well. Yeah. I love it so much. That makes all the sense in the world and you're accessible all the time. Now, many years ago, there was a rock and roll band and they would go to a concert venue and they would have a sheet of paper where they would have their list of demands. And one of the demands that was a famous demand was they only wanted green and the green m and M. So someone would have to sit there and pull all the reds and the browns out because they only wanted the bowl of green m and ms When you get a client that travels privately, do you ever get a request that might be interesting to our viewers or, or the people listening to the show as well that might they might find interesting? Oh, sure, sure. You know, you, you, you mostly see it in entertainment and we do a, you know, a, a sizable amount of entertainment travel um, because those folks are traveling so much that the, those little creature comforts are really important to them. Things that might seem insignificant to you or me do become really important because just imagine being that road warrior in a different city every day and every night. So um, we've never had the green M&M request. We've had requests for white scented candles, and we would have loved to uh, honor that request. But we had to tell those that particular individual that we can't have candles on the airplane. But uh, we've had people asking to make the cabin absolutely as cold as possible, but they want linens. And we've had people who wanted, you know, particular uh, beverages. So. We, we, we live for that kind of stuff. Um, we, you know, we have gone to these little obscure restaurants in the middle of little areas to get specific types of food so people can enjoy them in flight. So, yeah, it's, it's rather common. Those requests are rather common. I love it. It's so interesting. Now, how fast can we get somebody up in the air? You know, can someone come into Speedbird through either a direct route or through one of the brokers and they can be up in the air and how many hours or days does it take to get a plane going? Well, you know, we like to say that, uh, th- th- we like to say that we can do it in two hours or less. It, it stretched a little bit longer now because, you know, in a, in a post pandemic world, and this is the most amazing statistic every day I get up and it just blows me away. So in a post pandemic world, uh, well, let me start prior to the pandemic, approximately 1% of the people who had the means or the ability to fly privately chose to do so. That number is now closer to 40%. And with that 40%, what we have experienced is really high demand. So with that, and and we're no different, we've experienced that high demand. So, you know, we can still probably do under most instances, uh, if we're available, which you know, if we have an airplane that's ready to go, typically we're not available, but normally it's two to three hours, you know, normally two to three hours. Yeah, that's great. And of course, for a client that has heard about Speedbird, heard about your sort of white glove service, I'll call it, if they want to go to another continent, is that something you're also able to put together for them? 
We can, you know, speed bird jets and the aircraft we operate, our focus is on the continental United States, Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Um, in terms of operations, we're looking to, we are looking to um, maybe expand, but again, we're, that's kind of taking us out of our niche. So it's something that we're definitely looking at because um, international markets are, all, are really exciting to us. Um, a few years ago, we were looking at some Pacific Rim things. The Citation 10 isn't the airplane for that. If there's another airplane that we'd be looking at for that one. So it's something that possibly is, is on the horizon for us, um, handling Europe, Asia, and, and, and Central and South America. Yeah, that's awesome. And of course, again, you're staying in your lane. You're staying in this open corridor where you have become the expert, the go-to company for this type of opportunity, especially with the Citation 10. I love it so much. Now, Lewis, let's talk about corporate culture because, yeah. you know, corporate culture starts at the top. You've got this way about you that's very calming, especially if I'm going to fly private. I want to have somebody at the top that's making me feel very calm making me know that things are going to get done, letting me know that things are going to get handled in the right way. How important is it for your team to also have that same type of attitude when dealing with the customers and the brokers that you deal with? Oh, wow. You know, I always tell our folks that, look, we can never get too high. We can never get too low, right? So, I mean, on our best days when we were high-fiving each other, um, that's great, but on a, on, our, on, a, on a bad day, we didn't get the deal or something happened. Um, you know, we can never hang our heads. You know, I love sports. It's kind of a sports team mentality. You know, you know, after the win, you celebrate for five minutes, but hey, it's practice on Monday. And, and that's our, our same attitude. You know, we're, it's a very serious, we're very serious about what we do. But also it's important for, my, for myself as well as my team members that we enjoy what we do. Right. So that's why I'm always preaching. You never get too high. You never get too low. And, and, and you know, but enjoy the journey because this is, you know, we're all privileged to work in, in this profession. It's a sexy industry. We meet lots of great people. We have great experiences. We have great stories. So it's 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 a real privilege. It really is. I love it. And of course, I would imagine that there's an element of confidentiality and secrecy in your business as well, because, you know, the the celebrities and the sports stars and the, the business people most likely want their travel plans kept under wraps and they want to have it very confidential. So how important is that part of the business to make sure that you're providing this world-class service, but in a very individualized way that stays under wraps, if you will? Oh, it's extremely important, whether you're talking about the C-suite or entrepreneurs or even entertainers. You know, the airplane is a place of solitude and confidence, right? So once they set foot in that cabin, that door closes. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I grew up in the 70s. I loved um, Get Smart. You know, it's the cone of silence has gone down. For those who are my age, they know what I'm talking about. So when that door closes, it's the cone of silence. Only the cone of silence actually works. So it's yeah. extremely important. And that's one of the and that's one of the strengths of flying privately because, you know, you know, the airplane is actually an office in the sky, right? So if there are conversations that need to be had about business strategies or anything like that, you know, you know, today everyone has a camera. So the the, the cabin of the airplane is one of those places where, you know, you can speak freely, you can act freely, you can relax. That's a big thing because you know, entertainers, for example, when we fly entertainers, a lot of times we'll see paparazzi at the fences and they're clicking away and we'll see the entertainer being an entertainer, being very gracious and everything. And they get on the plane, they can just put their feet up, take their shoes off and and focus on what they need to do, because at the end of the day, they're working and this gives them a few minutes to like, to exhale and figure out what's what's going to happen next. So really important. Yeah, that's a great approach. And of course, Lewis. You and I both share something. We both love sports and we played sports. And I know you've got a SC football behind you, you know, which is great. Let's talk about sports for a minute. Okay. What have you brought to your entrepreneurial journey about building this great company that you've built that you learned from sports, either watching, playing or coaching? What, what transferred over to your entrepreneurship from the sport area? 
You know, I, I, I think the tenacity, you know, when I played football, I had a coach and he would always say, you got to want it, babe. You got to want it. And I'll tell you, that has really trance. You know, I, I've taken that with me because every day you have to get up, you know, in sports after a game, um, sometimes the body's aching. You're not feeling so well that the, 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 the um, euphoria has, has, has worn off. And now you feel the aches and pains. And, and sometimes as being an entrepreneur, it's the same thing. You know, you're feeling the aches and pains, but you got to want it. And you got to and you have to be passionate about what you're doing. You got to love it, because if you don't love it, what are you doing? You know, it's, it's such a sacrifice to to do this. I don't if you are running a lemonade stand or a Fortune 500 with tens of thousands of employees, it is a, it's a sacrifice. But it's also a privilege and a responsibility because you're leading something and people are depending on you and feeding on you. And that goes right back to sports. If you're the team leader. Hey, if your teammates see you bent over and you're looking dejected during tight times, well, they're saying, hey, if our guy is, is, is not believing, should we believe? But when our guy is standing tall and he's breathing in and out, he's got his hands on his hip, he's ready to go. If you think about a Michael, you know, Michael Jordan or Magic Johnson or a Larry Bird, then, you know, you can push through, too. And that's really what I, I, I bring from sports. I love it, Lewis. Of course, I want to ask you. A little bit about entrepreneurship. I know we've only sliced out a certain amount of time and thanks so much. But what I wanted to ask you also, you know, this citation tent, I mean, known for its speed. But the other thing that it's known for is its safety. So let's talk about that a little bit because that's important to people, you know, flying private. It is. It is. the Actually, the citation tent is actually an award-winning airplane. Uh, it was designed by Cessna back in the, um, the early to mid-90s. And, um, you know, NetJets, which is the, the largest fractional or business jet operator in the world, they were the launch customer. And the airplane has literally flown millions of miles safely. It is an incredibly safe airplane. It's got redundancies built into it. It, it, it is an amazing piece of machinery. It, it, it really is. Um, <laughs> it, it's an amazing, I laugh because, you know, we fly that thing every day or we fly our airplanes every day um, through all different types of weather. We get up every morning. I get up. The first thing I do is I turn on the weather channel. So, you know, what are we dealing with today? Because being here in Southern California, it's sunny and 70, 300 days a year, but we'll look and I'm like, okay, you know, one of the really popular destinations is New Jersey. We fly into Teterboro. I'm like, okay, what are we looking at Teterboro? How does Chicago look today like oh it's three below zero okay so we you know we know what we're we're getting ourselves uh, geared up for and really it's 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 the 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 weak link in the whole deal or the actual the crews you know I'm we're always concerned about um, crew members making sure that they're safe making sure that they're warm making sure that they don't slip and fall the airplane's going to do its thing we just have to be sure that we're we're keeping up with the airplane. You know, even in the cockpit, our guys and gals who fly, hey, they have to be, you know, it's called being in front of the airplane. And this plane is traveling at nine miles a minute. So they really have to stay in front of the airplane. Um, but the airplane, it's it's not the easiest. I'm not a pilot, by the way. But um, pilots have told me that it's, it's not an easy airplane to fly, but it's fun. And a lot of it has to do with its redundancies. And, you know, it, it's still kind of a stick and rudder airplane lot, you know, so it was really, I, I hate to use the word over-engineered, but they really, you know, Cessna really did their homework on this airplane. They really did. I love it. It's powerful. And how many people fit into a Citation 10? You know, it's certified for eight people, but most private jet flights, you're typically flying between two and four. And that's one of the, again, that's one of the advantages of the, of the 10 is it's got eight nice big captain's chair. So if you do have eight people in there, I'm a big guy. I fit just fine. You know, uh, you can put eight people in there and it's comfortable, but, but really when the average, the average flight is between two and four people, you can recline the seats. They articulate. It's, it's very comfortable. I love it, Lewis. Thank you so much. Now let's turn the final portion of our show to entrepreneurship because we have a lot of younger entrepreneurs watching the show. They're maybe in startup mode. They're building their business. Maybe they're hitting a pothole in the road. Maybe they're hitting a wall they can't get past. Maybe they're 
freezing in the frame. They don't know what to do because they're younger entrepreneurs or don't have the experience. So I'm hoping, Lewis, based on your experience with your success, what you're doing at Speedbird and everything else before Speedbird, which is remarkable, you could share some insight to the younger entrepreneurs about how to get through a tough time, how to get through a roadblock, what it takes to get through a wall and come out the other side uh, thinking to yourself that you're happy that you had that challenge that you got through and now you're better for having gone through it. Right. You know, so everything is a learning moment. I've had success. I've had failures. And the, the first time you come up against a substantial roadblock or you actually are unsuccessful in something, it goes back to the sports mentality. You know, that game is over. The season's not. And you have to look back and see what did you learn? What can you do differently? You know, it's, it's you know, every, it, every day is, is, is not going to be an easy day. Uh, I think the Navy SEALs during their training said the only easy day was yesterday. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, you feel like that. Uh, the funniest thing, I've been an entrepreneur for 22 years. And the first thing that I noticed as an entrepreneur, I was blessed enough to start getting employees. When I was an employee, like most employees, I would always look forward to payday. Yay, it's payday. As an entrepreneur, I look up and go, what? It's payday again? You know, because now you're responsible for people. So you have to keep that in context and, uh, context and understand it's a privilege to be here. You are actually doing exactly what you want to do. Most of us work for someone else. I've done it. I've been fortunate to work for some amazing people, amazing entrepreneurs. But, you know, now that I'm out on my own, that's a privilege. And for those young people who are coming out on their own and having tough times, understand it's a privilege. And with that privilege comes responsibility. And, and it's not for everyone. It really isn't. But for those, and I think, I think you figure it out pretty quickly, just, just power through. Just make it to the end of the day. Don't look at the top of the mountain. Just look at the next mile. I love it. And of course, as entrepreneurs, you and I both know that if you're not hitting those potholes, you're not hitting those challenges, you're not pushing hard enough. So that's great advice, Lewis. Listen, this has been a great interview. I mean, what you're doing with Speedbird is so remarkable. The Citation 10 experts, I mean, speed is the key. And this 1% this difference that your company sort of hangs its hat on is, is just resonated for so many people throughout the country. So congratulations, Lewis. This has been so fascinating to have you on the show. I'm going to bring you back again because I can talk about speed with you for days. So this has been a great interview. Thanks so much, Mr. Lewis Bell, for coming on the show. This has been absolutely awesome. It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy, and I'd love to come back anytime. Yes.